All right, welcome. In this uh, video, we'll talk about power in AC systems. Now, power is basically voltage times current, and we've looked at it uh, plenty of times when we've done DC circuits. Now, in an AC circuit uh, or sinusoidal steady state circuit, uh, we have voltage and currents that are both sinusoidal in nature. And remember, sinusoids refer not just to sines, but as well as cosines. So cosine is just a sine wave shifted uh, in 90 degrees. Uh, so basically both voltage and currents are of this form with V naught and I naught are the peak voltage and currents. Uh, omega is the frequency of oscillation. Uh, theta V is the phase angle of the voltage and theta I is the phase angle of the current. So these are two sinusoidal uh, voltage and current uh, statements. So in, in our case, at any given time, instance in time, Power P is the voltage at that instance in time times the current at that instance in time. So in other words, when we talk about AC circuits or AC power, we have something called an instantaneous power which refers to the power at a given time. Okay, so P of T can be written as the voltage uh, times the current at that instance in time. So if we expand that, uh, uh, v, Vt and It are V0 cosine omega T plus theta V uh, times I0 cosine omega T theta I. Now if you look at co this, so if you look at this and this, it looks like cosine A. So let's say this is A. Uh, so that's A. And let's say that the other one, this right here is B. So let me grab my pen. So that's A right there. And that's B right there. So cosine A times cosine B. Okay. Uh, if you remember trig identities, uh, you can say that cosine A cosine B is equal to cosine A plus B plus cosine A minus B divided by two. That's this thing right there. So that using that expression, let's simplify this a little further. So we have V naught I naught. That those are the V naught I naught. So we had cosine A cosine B. So cosine A cosine B is equal to, so if I take the two from here and move it down here, this is essentially what I have. Cosine omega T plus theta V, that's A plus B plus cosine A minus B. That's what I have right here. Simplifying this leads me to cosine two omega T plus theta V plus I uh, plus cosine theta V minus theta I in this uh, way. So this is called instantaneous power. So this gives you the power at any given time t. Uh, you replace that t and you know exactly what the power is. Now if I take a look at that expression, so let's take a look at that expression carefully. I have two components to that expression. So basically what I did was I took this component right here and multiplied it through to these guys, so I have two parts of that expression. One half v naught i naught cosine this term, and one half v naught i cosine this term. Okay. Now, if you look, take a look at this term, what do we see? We have a cosine with a twice the frequency. Okay. So in MATLAB, I'm gonna I'm gonna basically run a script right now and show you what the instantaneous voltage looks like for a resistive, capacitive, and an inductive circuit. Okay, so here is a resistive circuit. So basically this line right here, uh, the current and the voltage are both sinusoidal voltages. Uh, uh, they're of equal, so let me change the resistance a little bit so you can see the current. Uh, so let me do that again. And I have the resistance right here. So here's my resistor. Uh, so the blue plot is the voltage, the current is a little lower than that because I changed the resistance value. And you look at the red plot and that's the instantaneous power. Now if you look at the frequency of the voltage or the current and the frequency of the instantaneous power, what do you see? Essentially what you see is that the instantaneous power has twice the frequency as the current and the voltage. Now if you look at go back to our expression, what do we see here is two times the frequency. So that makes sense. Uh, similarly, uh, what we see is that our instantaneous power has a time component or the AC component right here. And if you look at this, cosine theta V minus theta I, that's 
not a AC component. That is the DC component of the signal. So the instantaneous power has an AC component as well as a DC component of that signal. And that DC component is basically the average power. And in this case, uh, for the resistor, the average power is somewhere right here in the middle uh, of that instantaneous power. So in fact, for this particular example, the way I have it, uh, this value is about 0.8 uh, something. So the, instant, so the average power is about 0.42 uh, watts. So that's the average power right here, right around this part right here. That's the average value of this instantaneous power. So that is where the average value of the instantaneous power comes from. Now if I run the same expression on a capacitor, that this is what I get. In a capacitor, the voltage and the current uh, are uh, are away from each other by 90 degrees. So instantaneous power is still twice the frequency of the red or the blue plot. If you look at just the blue plot, which is the voltage, and take a look at the red one, you'll see that the red plot for instantaneous power is still twice the frequency. But you also see that the instantaneous power is sometimes half the time in the t positive side and half the time in the negative side, resulting in an average value of zero. Similarly, for an inductor, you see the same same deal. You see that the uh, so the average uh, instant instantaneous power is on the positive and the negative side, and the average power is equal to zero. So what does that mean? It it basically means that for a inductor uh, or a purely inductive or a purely capacitive circuit, meaning only a capacitor, or a pure inductor or a pure capacitor, the PFT, which is the instantaneous power, is actually symmetric about the x-axis, equal part on the positive and the negative side. That means uh, the inductor or the capacitor, whatever element we have, is actually absorbing power for half the cycle and delivering or returning power for the remaining half. That basically means that the average power here dissipated, uh, average power dissipated or burnt in a purely inductive or capacitive circuit is actually zero. Now, if we had somewhat of a mixed resistor, if we mix a resistor and inductor or a resistor and a capacitor, uh, the PFT is more on the positive side actually. So uh, let me do that uh, simulation real quick. Here's an example that I did a, a little earlier with a mixed resistive and inductive or a capacitive circuit. And what, what you see here essentially is that in the mixed resistive and indu inductive circuit, uh, in mixed resistive and inductive or capacitive circuit uh, is that the red plot for the instantaneous power right here is more on the positive side. So this suggests that most of the power is being absorbed by the load and dissipated while some of the power is being returned. So the amount of power that's being returned is fairly low. Uh, intuitively, now if a capacitor inductor draws current from the source and has a voltage drop across it, the average power uh, is basically zero, and that's what we saw earlier in this plot for uh, the inductor where we saw the average power is equal to zero. Uh, so basically that means that the average power basically does not give us the whole picture in the case of AC circuits, because there is this whole business I mean, in an inductor, think about it, it's drawing power from the source, but yet we're seeing that the average power dissipated in the inductive load is equal to zero. So we're not get, really getting a full picture of power in the AC domain by just looking at the average power. In fact, the average power does not account for power. In this case, the inductor is asking for power and returning the power here, asking for power, returning the power. So average power doesn't account for the uh, power that's, you know, average power does not account for the power that's returned back by capacitive or inductive load back to the source. So dealing with AC domain requires a few more understanding of, uh, of uh, power terms, which we'll talk about in just a second. So let me close this out. So let's go back to our instantaneous power and uh, and we just talked about the average power. So the average power we saw that was equal to zero. So that this term right here basically becomes the average average power. So that term basically becomes the average power. So when we go and talk about average power, this is the expression that we're talking about. Uh, in this case, this cosine theta v minus theta i has a special 
uh, name that we call that the power factor, which we'll talk about in just a second. So let's go back to our table of resistor, capacitor, inductor. Uh, that this is the V equals uh, v voltage current relationship in the time domain, uh, voltage current relationship in the phasor domain. Uh, here's the impedance and the phase difference. Now, the voltage lags the current by 90 degrees in a capacitor and the voltage leads the current by 90 degrees uh, uh, in the case of an inductor. Uh, here's a quick way to remember that. Uh, I use the acronym CIVIL, C-I-V-I-L, which basically means in the case of a capacitor, which is C, I leads the voltage, but V leads the current, V leads I, in the case of an inductor, which is L. So that's a quick way of remembering who leads, whether the voltage or current leads uh, by 90 degrees. And here is a quick calculation if we uh, basically, V lags I by 90 degrees, so that means the voltage I in the case of a capacitor is greater than voltage V by 90 degrees. So this expression basically minus 90 in the case of a capacitor leading uh, still to an average value of zero in the case of an average power. So uh, before we move on to other forms of power, let's quickly talk about uh, what we typically hear in uh, in case of AC circuits called RMS value. Uh, so, so average uh, DC power dissipated by a resistor, uh, so if you talk about DC power, is given as voltage DC times current DC, or we can also write this, write this write that as V square over R by basically replacing I using Ohm's law, I equals V over R. So that's how this comes comes about. Now, average power dissipated in a resistor in AC, we just saw, was equal to V naught I naught over two, cosine this is basically zero, so that's one. So we, this is what we saw is basically our uh, average power dissipated in a purely resistive circuit. And RMS, or the effective voltage value, is basically defined as the equivalent DC voltage value that provides the same power. Okay, so RMS, or the effective voltage value for an AC, is the equivalent DC voltage value that provides the same power. So if we equate those two expressions right there, V squared DC over R, where DC is RMS now, uh, and say that, then uh, we basically get V squared RMS, so I can cancel these out, Right, uh, and so V DC is basically V squared uh, uh, RMS. So I get V square over V naught square over two. So in other words, V RMS is basically the peak voltage divided by square root of two. Similarly, uh, I RMS is I uh, the peak current uh, divided by the square root of two. In fact, root mean square basically stands for. Uh, for any x of t, RMS value of x of t basically means take the square of x of t, root mean square, so take the square, take the mean of the squares, and take the square root of the mean, so that's what it means. Uh, we can write the average power in terms of RMS value, so this was the average power that we had written before. Now V naught over 2 times I naught over, uh, this can be written as Basically, V naught over square root of 2 times I naught over square root of 2 because square root of 2 times square root of 2 is equal to 2. So that basically gives us VRMS. So this term leads us to VRMS. This term leads us to IRMS as shown here uh, below. Okay. So that's basically RMS value. Uh, we'll talk uh, about uh, reactive power and other forms of power in the next video.